What's up guys, Greg Bear here, and if you found this video searching, you probably had the same problem I do. My HP Omen laptop gets a little too hot for comfort, and you and I, we both want to extend the life of this investment as far as we can. So, what we're gonna do today is replace the thermal paste on the GPU and the CPU. But before we get started, I did some pre-test on here. We're running Coaster Planet on high settings, 1080p, and we have 99% usage on the CPU at 84 degrees Celsius and 55 to 60% usage on the CPU at 95 to 100 degrees Celsius, which is way too hot for a laptop. And with the Omen laptops, you can't get a laptop cooler because the vents are actually right in the back in a weird place. You can get a vacuum cooler. I actually bought one and then I found out I could replace the thermal paste and it'll probably work a little better. So we're gonna try this first before I return the vacuum cooler. And with that being said, let's get this video started. Before we get started tearing down the laptop, I wanna go over everything you'll probably need to get this done efficiently. You're gonna need some isopropyl alcohol, probably at least the 70 to 90%. Anything lower than that, you'll leave these disgusting residues on it. So I've got some 91% here, whatever. It's from Walmart, it costs like a dollar. And we're gonna need something to pry the case open. You gotta be super careful with this. You only wanna use the knife on one corner and then you can use something softer like a credit card or I'm using a little wooden wedge and just work your way around the laptop so you're not getting all those little pry marks everywhere because I don't want that, nobody wants that. And we're gonna need a basic screwdriver kit, one of these tiny little guys with a little Phillips head on it. You'll pretty much be using the Phillips head for everything in this project. And of course, something to keep the screws in because you know you're gonna bump in the screws and lose them and those things are tiny and you'll never find them ever again. And I think that's everything. Oh, thermal paste, of course. I get this on Amazon, the Arctic Silver 5. It cost $7, I think, and it's good for, they said, like at least 10 CPUs, which, of course, I only have one laptop, and who knows, this laptop should last me at least five years, especially if we're gonna do this today and get the temps down. It should definitely last a long time. So, I think that's all the supplies we're gonna need. So, first things first, we're gonna take off this back cover. Let's do it. We have all the screws out now and your best bet look around the edge of your laptop and you're gonna find an edge somewhere that's a little wider than the rest so you can get your knife in there and if you want to use a knife use whatever you're comfortable with this is your investment but I'm gonna use this cheese knife it's super thin but strong enough to get in there I've tried credit cards before it doesn't really work well so let's do this just want to gently get your knife in there just to break it open that much. And you don't have to use the knife anymore and worry about messing this thing up. Then take your credit card or whatever you want to use. I'm using this wooden wedge. It's actually from an ax handle. It's the perfect width and strength and it's soft enough where it's not gonna leave any crazy pry marks. And you're just gonna wedge it in there and then you can glide it along like so. And as you go, just twist and break the seal open lightly. Like that. Like I said, I already did this earlier, so you might have a tougher time than me if you're breaking it open for the first time. But overall, just take your time. Do not break anything. back plate's loose, we can just lift it off now, like so. There we are, insides, boom. Next step we have to do is we have to remove this battery. We don't want any power going to anything weird while this is working. And then we're also gonna hold down the power button to expend any power that's in any of the capacitors or anything. So, just got four screws right here, 
damn, we'll move this tiny battery. It's amazing how small this battery is compared to a laptop I bought like 10 years ago that was like three inches thick and just massive and it stuck out the back. Man, how technology has changed. Now that we have the four screws removed, just pull the battery right out nice and easy. Set that aside. Okay, now we're gonna flip it back over real quick. And press and hold the power button down for about five to 10 seconds. That should take care of any residual build up inside the capacitors and will make this totally safe for us. You can also wear a static wristband if you want. I didn't have one on me handy and I didn't feel like going out and buy one honestly, but this should do plenty. All right, we're good to go. Next up, we're gonna remove the heat exhaust ports on both sides here. And one, two, three, four. It looks like we got four screws on each one. This should be a super easy one here. Alright, now that the exhaust ports are gone, we have better access to the heat tubing here. And now we can take off this flashing here and get to the fan bolts and everything else here. And it should be a quick job. Let's do it. Alright, now that we got the flashing out of the way, if you want to completely remove this one, you're going to have to unconnect this right here so you can get this out of here, but I think I'm just going to try to do it without doing that. And we're going to go ahead and remove the screws that hold the heatsink tubing in place. Lots of them here and there. I've already tried to remove these before. They're actually very tough. So take your time on them. You don't want to strip them out. Otherwise, this project's done and who knows how you're going to get them out. So very carefully, one at a time. Let's get Okay, we got all the screws loosened up. Now all we have to do is gently push this up. Of course, thermal paste is gonna be a little sticky, so you just gotta break that bond it has on it and gently push it up like so. And there we are. So next up, of course, we're gonna take our isopropyl alcohol and remove all the old thermal paste here. Looks like garbage. Now you can also use an actual compound that's made to clean this stuff off, but I'm sure it costs 10 times more than isopropyl alcohol. And if you don't live in an area that has a computer parts store, you gotta order it online and wait for it to actually come. So, best off, just use isopropyl alcohol. And of course, take your time with this. You don't wanna get it where you don't want it to be because you never know what could happen. Before you get started actually using the isopropyl alcohol, you can take your credit card or whatever kind of card you want to scrape off the bulk of it. It'll save you a lot of time in the long run trying to clean up this mush. Like so. And now that the bulk's gone, Take your wiping device of choice. Now if you use any kind of paper towel or napkin, you're likely to get a lot of fibers on here. So if you use a microfiber cloth when you're done using this, it'll get rid of all the fibers. And of course you can use canned air as well to blow any weird stuff off at the end. And of course the trick is to remove everything you can, get all the contaminants off, leave a nice clean surface for the new thermal compound to stick to. So the trick to this is, of course, is as soon as your paper towel or napkin is coming off clean, you know you got everything off. And now we can move on to the thermal face that's on the GPU and the CPU. Of course, got to be a little more careful on here. It's a smaller area. You don't want to spread the old thermal compound all over your motherboard or anything. So we got to be super careful. Take our time on this. Be patient. All right, we're going to start off with the same procedure. 
take your card, gently peel off all the bulk you can. Oop, try not to get it anywhere else, like that. Of course, I was just playing Planet Coaster on pretty much 100% on GPU and 50% on CPU, so it's a little warm and pliable right now, but otherwise it might be a little sticky and gummy like clay almost to get off. Alright, we got the bulk of it off. Now let's get wiping here. You know, now I realize I probably didn't even go over the specs on this laptop. This is the 15 inch HP Holman with the i7 8750H. Uh, 1060 Max-Q edition. It's got a 256 gigabyte SSD and a one terabyte regular hard drive, 16 gigs of DDR4, running Windows 10. This would be last year's model. I bought this off the website Macari. I guess you could call it technically used. The guy bought it and never opened the box and Macari was running a 10% off sale so I actually got this thing for $730 brand new in box. Quite the steal. I mean, I know it's not this year's model, but it'll suffice for everything I need. Mainly for uh, video editing, of course, and light gaming. I, mean, I love playing anything Roller Coaster Tycoon or Planet Coaster-wise. I love playing all that, so this definitely does the job very well. Just a little loud with the fans once it gets going, but hopefully this is going to help a lot. Alright, looks like I got that pretty shiny. Use a clean towel and get off any residue now. Ooh wee! It's shiny. Alright. Now let's do the next one. And one more time, let's repeat this process. Watching this video, you're probably like me, you're not super fluent with the inside of a computer, but that's what the internet's for. YouTube is an amazing place. I learned how to do this off YouTube and reading, and hopefully you guys do the same and pass it on to somebody else. Just a wealth of information. Okay, we are good to go. Everything is cleaned up. Now it's time to apply the new thermal paste. So now the fun part, we gotta reapply the thermal paste. I've read millions of forms on how much you're actually supposed to put on here. Uh, they say a pea size or smaller, but that's of course for a desktop size, and this is a lot smaller, so we're gonna go way smaller than that. I know you're probably worried you're not gonna put on enough, but don't worry, it'll squish out. So. Too much on it'll squeeze out and it could possibly get in these electrical components down here it's not supposed to short circuit them out but there is metal inside this so i don't know how that works honestly but yeah so that's about the right amount for that we can move over here to the next and the same thing it's about the same size so about the same amount And of course be super careful, don't get your human oils all over this, it could definitely affect the thermal capacity of the thermal paste and how it exchanges heat and all that stuff. So just be careful, you want to apply even pressure when you put this back down, take it nice and slow. Alright, we got it in place, apply a little bit of pressure on the CPU and the GPU with your fingers. If you really are nervous about it, you can do a little circular motion to make sure it gets in while you're applying pressure and gets in all across the surface like so. Okay, we should be good. Now we can start reassembly, the fun part.
Hopefully you got all your screws in order. If you ever taken off like a head gasket in the car or torqued down your wheels, you definitely want to do a crisscross pattern on this. So you're applying the torque evenly across so everything spreads good. Definitely don't over torque these, nothing wild. Just finger tight, of course. And if you wanted to, you could reapply thread lock on these. That's totally up to you. I'm not going to in this video because I don't have any on me. And I don't feel it necessary. I'm not going to be carrying this everywhere. It's not going to be subject to a lot of vibration, so we should be fine. Another good tool to have while you're doing this is a small magnet. Nothing wild that's going to wipe anything out on this, but just enough in case you lose your screw somewhere crazy down here and you have to retrieve it. Good thing to have on you. These screws are not fun to handle with your fingers. They are very hard to get a hold of sometimes. Okay, got that one down. All right, now we've got all the tubing tied down here nice and tight, torqued properly, and now we're gonna put this back on, the shrouding for the fan. Okay, got this side done. Now we're gonna put the exhaust output back on, like so. to be. Okay, took a little finesse in here, but that's back in place now. All right, let's throw these screws back in here. So the whole left side's done. Now we can start on the right side. Same old thing. Got the flash in here. I already kind of Got it in place here. Just gotta tighten it down. Now we'll put the other exhaust tube in here. Wow, that side took a lot of finessing to get in place. made a difference. Battery going in. Just make sure you line it up right there. Snug it in gently. Don't want to break anything. Or this there. Battery installed. Last step. Let's put the faceplate back on. All right. This back on. Yep, backwards. Sorry about that. Of course, you want to go around and re-snap everything in place. Otherwise you'll have a lot of ugly gaps. Okay, she's all put back together. And now the test. Turn back on. Here we go. All right, we did it. The laptop still works, and let's go over the specs now. 
So we are running at 98% on the GPU at 69 degrees Celsius. And before we were running at 100% on the CPU at about between 80 to 85 degrees Celsius. So that's a huge win. As far as the CPU goes, we're running right around 50% and we're still, uh, it's bouncing up and down. It's running between 80 to 95 as before it was running between 90 and 100 so we're definitely seeing a little bit of an advantage not anything crazy but to lower the jeep the gpu by that much is definitely a win but overall this only cost me 10 bucks to do and we are seeing a difference with the gpu so that'll help the heat overall and yeah that's that i hope everybody else had uh, as good as luck as i did with this and got all the screws back in place didn't get to the end of the project and see one screw on their tray and be like, where did I miss this screw? That's always the worst when that happens. So with that being said, if you like this video, definitely give it a like. If you want to see more, definitely subscribe. And if you want to stay in the know for all my future uploads, make sure you turn on that notification bell and make sure you set the notification on always. And I hope to see you all next video. Greg Bear out.